I'd never seen so many Jeeps in my life. When I first got to the Condillo region of Colombia, I couldn't help but notice the vehicle of choice, Jeep. Not Cherokee, not Renegade, not Wrangler, not why does Jeep even make the compass? I'm talking about old Jeeps, pretty much all of them willies, and in fact, it's part of their culture. By the way, if you're a car nut like me, I've got more car videos coming up, as well as some other and oddball variety stuff, so click that subscribe button and the bell notification icon. The original Jeep is a creation of the USA. Back in 1940, realizing they were gonna have to participate in World War II, they contacted 135 companies for a design for a four-wheel drive reconnaissance car. Only Willys Overland and Bantam replied. By the way, Bantam was originally American Austin, and that's Austin. Don't mispronounce it. It's not Aston. It's not Austin. It's Austin. The Army gave them a 49-day deadline. Willys asked for more time. Bantam got in under the wire with their design on September 21st of 1940 with the Bantam Reconnaissance Car. By the way, it should probably have been called the Propes Reconnaissance Car. Say that three times fast. They had contacted freelance designer Carl Propes for the design. He originally turned them down, but then apparently the army persuaded him to do the project. The army thought Bantam was too small to fill their contract, so they shared the design with Willys and Ford, who then produced their own versions called the Willys Quad and the Ford Pygmy. Together, the three companies made over 640,000 cars for World War II. And by the way, did you notice none of them were called Jeep? There's no unanimous consensus on where that name comes from, but a lot of people assume it's a slur of the initials GP for general purpose. The first Jeeps in Colombia showed up in 1946. They were the M38 CJ2A models and they were intended for military use. But the coffee farmers who grow their crops on steep fields noticed the cars and realized they were the perfect solution for tired donkeys. They called them mulitas mecanicos or mechanical mules. These days they call them jeepayos. I haven't found anyone that can give me the etymology of that word. Since showing up in Colombia, besides military and coffee use, they were used for general agriculture and basic transportation, and quite a number were converted into moving vans and chiva buses. As I said, in the Quindío region of Colombia, they're celebrated as part of their culture. You see them everywhere, used as tourist transportation, advertisement, photo op props. Every summer, they have a Jeep parade, and in fact, they hold the Guinness World Record for longest Willys Jeep parade, which, although it's a weird category, is still impressive at 370 Jeeps. Before one of you Carnet factards starts typing about the record for the longest Jeep parade being in Pennsylvania with 2,420 cars, I said Willie's Jeeps. Guinness is super specific. They also have records for Porsche parades, Segway parades. Along with the parade, the Jeep owners participate in contests, including one called the PK, which involves loading up the car with 1,800 kilograms of local products. That's about two tons. And it causes the car to tip back on its rear wheel wheelie style. Then the object is to drive the car as far as you can on two wheels, longest distance wins. Some people even ride on the hoods like cowboys on a bull. A running Willys Jeep in Colombia usually sells for the equivalent of about five to eight thousand US dollars. Nicely restored ones will go for a little more than ten grand. Thirteen grand, this guy's dreaming. And you Jeep nuts in North America, you're Googling flights to Colombia, aren't you? Thanks for watching. Check out my daughter's channel and stay out of the comfort zone. Today we're going to talk about it an animal in Colombia called a guatine. It kind of looks like a rat and a rabbit had a baby, but they're bigger than either of those animals.